Ron, welcome everyone. Uh, it's so great to be uh, in Berlin again. Um, I met a former colleague, a lot of friends. Um, you know, we uh, I was leading here technologies prior to joining Red Hat, um, uh, the developer uh, team, and uh, so many good friends. And I'd spoken in this event last in 2019, if memory serves right. So it's great to be back in Berlin and uh, see all of you. So thanks, thanks for joining. My name is Mithun Dar, and I lead the developer business unit at Red Hat. I got the funnest job in Red Hat. You know, I love it. Um, there are two components to this job. One of them is uh, running the program, and Ignacio is my right-hand man, um, whom I depend on. This whole event uh, was uh, coordinated by Ignacio, at least the Red Hat presence in this event. Um, and then building products, uh, you know, building products like Podman Desktop, like Red Hat Developer Hub, like Red Hat Sandbox, um, and making the developer experience better for each one of those. That's what this team at Red Hat does. We are over 400 people uh, within the business unit and uh, that includes engineering, product management, everyone. And all of us are working with one goal, make developer lives better when they use Red Hat products. Um, and and why, why does developer experience matter so much? You know, um, how, how many of you by, by raise of hands or even putting your fedoras on that you have, Tell me, tell us how many of you here are developers? Wow, okay. So that's, that's pretty much uh, all of you here are developers. And, and you know, when you use those products, when you use uh, tools, uh, how important it is to, you know, minimize the friction, how to easily get started, how, how you could uh, um, uh, be more productive when you use a platform, when you use a tool. You know, these days, uh, it's, you're inundated with so many different things. Um, I started uh, coding, you know, 25, 25, 26 years ago, and I started actually uh, writing programs for GW Basic. And from there, you know, started using Fortran, Pascal, COBOL, and, and, and I still remember the first time after using all those languages when I wrote my first Windows application using a Windows SDK. It was revolutionary. The whole concept of an SDK was fascinating. Um, and ever since, you know, um, everybody now knows how SDKs change our lives, but, you know, we have, we have evolved quite a bit, right? But measuring that developer productivity from one tool to the next, from one release to the next, you know, it's it's basically trying to make it easier, make it faster, make it simpler for developers. Um, how many of you have coded before IntelliSense? Before even IntelliSense was there, I think Visual Studio 2004, or no, 2000, Visual Studio 2000, I think, .NET, Visual Studio .NET was the first one, first version which had IntelliSense, um, you know, that's, and now, you know, Copilot is, is easily integrated and easily available and, and you know, it's changing, right? It's, it's becoming more and more efficient for us to use the tools easier. And at the same time, you know, it is inherently becoming very complex. Um, you know, today as developers, we need to make sure that all the applications are secure, uh, right? Our code is compliant uh, with one of the many compliances that we need to follow. Um, and you know, how, how, so measuring that whole developer productivity uh, is much more complex. And, and just to, um, you know, tell you why it is important that we need to measure developer productivity is because study after study after study has shown that companies which have developer-centric cultures, companies where developers are happy and thriving, uh, have a bottom line, uh, lead to a better bottom line for the company. In this case, four times more, um, you know, than what uh, their competitors who don't care about uh, developer experience or developer happiness is. And, and again, this, is the, this re uh, report here, the McKinsey uh, report is fascinating. If you get a chance, um, you know, definitely download and read it at leisure. Um, it's, it's, a great, uh, um, uh, it's a great report, an insightful report. Not only are happier employees more productive but they also like to stay in a company which cares about their developers so you know essentially developer experience developer centricity leads to developer happiness which leads to more productivity which leads to more revenue it's as simple as that you know you got to make a few leaps that's it um and and uh, in um 
in in making sure that you know we are building the products uh, uh, for developers in the right way we are built we are making it effective for developers uh, we at red hat uh, you know um follow follow three three key aspects uh, and then we were we were really surprised when you know uh, the this re research report from microsoft researchers and university of victoria published you know and they said hey there are they they categorized over 25 different uh, factors that go into making developer experience and release this framework which is very um, sort of easy to use more practical uh, to uh, apply within a company and it it boils down to three things the first thing is reducing cognitive load. And I'll, I'll click on each of these uh, in detail. The second one is optimizing for the flow state. And the last one is establishing a strong feedback loop. What it essentially means is, hey, help get developers started you know, easily without any friction. Once they start, help them you know, to be in the flow, help them to write uh, their applications, develop their applications seamlessly, you know. And lastly, help them to deploy those applications, make it easier, um, and, um, you know, uh, get into, um, uh, help them uh, publish the application and get it to their customers, increase the value stream. That's what uh, those three things is. And to explain each one of these concepts, I thought, what better an analogy to use than our daily lives, right? Um, um, like many of you here, um, my favorite pastime, or my second most favorite pastime, is binge watching a good show on TV. Um, and like all of you, you know, I've had many, many remote controls over the years. But one remote control stood out for me for a long time. I, I you know, I had the same remote control for over three or four years, and that is the Logitech Harmony uh, 650 remote control. Any anybody has that here? Anybody used it? Maybe it's a U.S. thing. I don't know. Um, uh, but but it was a fantastic remote. You know, it had it pretty much had uh, a lot of uh, um, you know uh, features and functionality. It came with a 22-page user manual, by the way if you're interested, and it had six programmable buttons, um, and every function on the TV could be hard, uh, had a hard function or a hard button on the remote itself. You know, I, I loved it um, for about three or four years, um, but, but there were only five functions that I used in it. Um, I never went to, you know, discover all the other capabilities of that remote. I you know, because whenever I saw that 22-page user manual, it was a little inundating to me. Um, and then about six months ago, uh, my wife plugged in uh, Apple TV because she wanted to get the pictures onto uh, the TV from the phone uh, in, a, in an easy way. Uh, so that when, when we had guests or friends or uh, you know, wow. whoever comes to the house, we could share the pictures and put them in a loop and you know, ma make that integration more seamless. And when she did that, I noticed uh, that, you know, that remote control, a new remote control had made it into our family. I saw that and I'm like, huh, this is such a small remote. It's a, you know, I don't know if I could use it. You know, it, it definitely didn't look like my uh, Logitech there, right? It, it, looked, it looked very puny uh, to, say, to say the least. But 10, maybe 12 minutes after having this remote, I was in love with it. The way it felt in my hand, the weight of the remote, the easy functionality, how intuitive it was, you know, it was fantastic. And it did every function that the Logitech remote did in a more seamless way. You know, it also had an, uh, the natural user interface with the uh, speak to, uh, you know, change HDMI channels, whatnot, other functions on the TV. It was just fantastic. And that is what reducing cognitive load is, right? Like, look at that remote. I mean, the simplicity of that remote is just fascinating. They don't even go to, you know, write what each of those buttons are because we all know what each of those buttons are. And if you don't know, you'll figure it out in the first two minutes of using that remote, um, right? So our developer tools, our developer uh, products that we use are somewhere stuck in the Logitech remote world, right? We we inundate our developers uh, with uh, you know complexity. So uh, when especially when you think about you know the entire uh, developer workflow uh, loop from you know from onboarding onto a new project or getting started. Uh, 
writing your applications to publishing your applications to monitoring your applications everything becomes so complex you know um what what we at red hat are doing uh, is trying to minimize that cognitive load across each one of those uh, phases um and and particularly i'll i'll talk about um, each one of those phases and tell you how how we are helping developers here uh, from a onboarding perspective you know think about the first time you started your project or you you joined a new company you joined a new team and how complex it was what all you had to set up um, you know download the different pieces set your machine set your environment get access to the git git repo all, like, like like it is inundated with complexity right um, and to reduce all of that complexity make it more streamlined make it more efficient for developers to be onboarded we launched a product called as red hat developer hub and this red hat developer hub is based on the successful upstream cncf project called as backstage um, and we are using backstage and we built uh, the developer hub which is essentially a sing uh, uh, an uh, internal developer uh, portal and a platform that is that has opinionated paths but is also flexible it allows you to make it your own it has a rich ecosystem of pro uh, tools and products and plugins that you can rip uh, that you can replace or use um, the uh, opinionated uh, paths from within um, uh, from within your uh, from within the tool itself or or the platform itself um, it offers as a single pane of glass for everyone in the company. Um, and um, it allows uh, engineers to be more productive um, and use um, you know, uh, golden paths and guardrails to get started on application development and then uh, uh, start publishing and deploying to um, you know, the endpoints that uh, they are looking at. Uh, but, you know, let me actually show you this in action instead of talking more. Natale, uh, who leads developer advocacy uh, at Red Hat, um, is going to show you this. And those of you uh, standing in the back, there are some seats here. Please uh, come join us and uh, you, can, you can sit here if you wish to. All right, Natale. Thank you, Mitun. Uh, please come along because here today we have only live demos. I'm really happy to be here in the city in Berlin, super cool city. And uh, I love conference like this with... Uh, people passionate about technology like you. Uh, me and my team are here to deliver some session with all live demos. So uh, with all the consequences, of course. So let's start this. And Mitun, I love your analogy about the remote. I didn't know there was so much expertise in remote, but um, this is very cool to understand how it's important to remove friction and how it's important user experience and developer experience. And uh, the, I'm going to show you uh, a demo of Developer Hub simulating a developer doing an onboarding on a real project. Where uh, we created this uh, simple organization on GitHub called the Wind Turbine Inc. This uh, this uh, this this company produces uh, software uh, games. It's a software company producing games, and uh, those games are um, uh, towards generating green electricity. We'll play this game today uh, today in the in the stage in the, as a, a live demo for this keynote. But let me show you how, at the, as a developer, I can get started on project at ease without not losing too much time on setting up environment, uh, finding documentation. You know, sometimes documentation are people, uh, but people also live, and then you, we need to figure out how how we can do that. So, I'm using this uh, sample organization. I'm in those developers we're here and they listed here with uh, some of the team as well and i want to get started my first point of start is this one is red dot developer hub as mitun mentioned this is red dot products uh, leveled on on top of backstage backstage is an open source and cncf project for implementing internal developer platform it's really cool because it's a standard way to define uh, uh, how to get onboarded into projects. So the first thing you have when you have uh, your developer hub, of course, is a home page with the favorite tool you can download to get started, cluster connection or tooling. But I want to show you that uh, as a first onboarding, let, let's imagine you are, it's the first day of work. And the first thing you want to do is understanding uh, what you can do in the company. So there's uh, some learning path you can configure on learning some of the technology. Today, we're deploying a, a game uh, developed on, on Java, which is using uh, Kafka for messaging, Infinispan for the, for, uh, as a distributed caching. So first, you want to learn some of the topic. And then 
you want to create, you want to start developing this game. So how can you do with your GitHub account? I'm, I'm logging in this uh, system and I can pick one of the available template. This is an important concept. The Golden Path template as a, a way to get started into project. You can set up a skeleton of your project with your, you can create some repos repositories, you can create some uh, CI CD automation. Uh, my colleague and Peter, after the session, will show you in detail how to use it. But here, I want to show you that I created this uh, sample template, which is the Java template to deploy the game. And let me show you quickly, real quickly, what is a template under the hood? This is the definition of how Backstage define a template. Essentially, it's a YAML file where you can say, hey, this is a template generating some Java project. And uh, those are the parameters you can inject into the template. This will auto-generate a form. So you can uh, remove the friction to your developer, to the developers, right? To uh, get started in the project, connect to some cluster. You can really uh, develop this part. And this will convert into a a sequence of form. For instance, we are part of the organization. Let's go into set and putting other setting. We are targeting some Kubernetes cluster. In this case, it's an OpenShift cluster. Uh, we want to work in some namespace, Kubernetes namespace. So let me create this namespace. The owner is my GitHub user, and uh, I'm fulfilling other settings. Some can be pre, pre felt. Uh, so I'm using, I want this template generating a container image. And I want to store this container image inside the cluster. You can also connect to other registry like Quayo or Docker Hub, whatever. Um, so easy way to get started. When you hit the Create button, uh, what Developer Hub is doing is creating some repository in the organization you connect and creating a skeleton of the project. And I want to show you in detail, because this is really important to understand how this tool is removing friction. So I have an overview of the whole project. Like this is connected to GitHub in this case, but can be on other uh, Git server. Uh, so you have an overview on uh, the GitHub uh, pull request, any issue open. Of course, the project just started, so we don't have any. And of course, you have the evidence of the of the of the source code you generate. So you, if you open um, uh, the the wind turbine organization again, we go to the repository. As you can see, there are two new repo. One is the app repo. So as a developer, I want to start contributing to this uh, game that we will play together to generate some green energy. Um, and so there's, here's the documentation, right? But I have uh, scaffolded some projects and the code is there. So I can really get started in developing something. Um, and also there's a, a convenient GitOps repository. This template uh, is also set up to uh, automate everything. This means that can automate the container image creation uh, thanks to a series of plugins that also read that support. And I want to show you what are those plugins. The CI plugin is a plugin that uses Tekton, which is an open source software, Kubernetes native to create pipeline in the cluster. So this, this is now creating a Tekton pipeline, creating the container image and pushing this container image into the registry. There's another plugin for deploying application, which is the Argo CD plugin. Argo CD is a popular open source software for implementing GitOps. So this is the GitOps plugins also supported in Developer Hub, and it's part of the ecosystem. So as you can see, I've scaffolded some repository that I can start coding. I can I, I scaffolded some project that is uh, uh, evolving and creating something in the system. And also I'm connected to the Kubernetes cluster, my target Kubernetes cluster. I have an evidence on what is going on. I have some uh, pods running. You know, this is also cool to remove friction to the developer. You don't have to be a Kubernetes hacker, right? To get started. This, this, this template system really helps you get started into project with some automatic uh, automation, but also you have this nice dependency graph with, uh, uh, with the relations. And, uh, and uh, what is happening under the hood is that you are connected to the target cluster. All those links I'm showing you here are auto-generated. So once you install Developer Hub and you set up the templates, this, this mechanism automatically connect you to the cluster. So 
I'm using how my Kubernetes cluster. In this case, this is an OpenShift cluster. What you see here is the OpenShift web console, which is a web console showing you all the uh, settings. And there's also uh, a topology here where I can show you that the template not only is deploying my Java application, but also is deploying the dependencies. This Java app needs Kafka for the messaging. When you're going to play the game, and we will do it in, uh, later, uh, you're going to send Kafka messages to the, to the backend from your mobile phone. And also use a distributed cache for doing that. Where you can define this, you can define in the scaffolder module. So the template is using uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, source code where you can define all those settings in the GitOps repository. So this was how to get started and scaffolding everything. And last but not least, if you are familiar with uh, um, with Argo CD, this is generating also some, some Argo CD deployment. Yeah. So you can see an evidence that uh, is, is deploying your application, is deploying on the component. You know, this is fully automated and uh, I didn't have to set up anything. It was already done. And if you don't want to, uh, to add uh, to enter in, in the cluster, there's also this nice topology view, which is another plugin that is providing you a view of what is going deployed into the cluster. So um, this is going on. Once this is ready, the app has been deployed and we can get started. But before we close this demo, this, this first demo we do, I want to show you that, you know, you have the code, you can also start coding. What about you code directly from here? If you don't want to spend time in setting up your environment, you can use OpenShift Dev Spaces, which is a, a product built on top on Eclipse Chat an open source software for implementing uh, in-browser IDE. Eclipse J and Dev Spaces, they mount your favorite IDE. They, you can use IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio Code. And I, uh, when you click, this is open a web interview of Visual Studio Code with the source code. And you can open a terminal and, and run your, you know, your command. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, run some run configuration. You can open a terminal and run your, your settings. Here, uh, this is a Java app. I want to package my app, so I'm running Maven package. This is all configured automatically. And this part is part of the automation. So that's really cool. And maybe that Mithun give me the time to, to have the, the deployment up and running. Yes. So. My app is deployed to the cluster, and this is the game. I want to show you this is the front end of the game. So you're going to play this game from your mobile app. But this is the first part of our series of demo. As you can see, we were able to scaffold that project from scratch and being able to start contributing from the first minute. Absolutely. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Natale. Uh, so what, what you saw here is how easy it was for a brand new employee to be onboarded, you know, have guardrails and get access to uh, getting him to get, get access to the right systems and get him uh, contributing to the right uh, uh, project and, and get published, uh, get, get uh, published to, uh, you know, the server that, uh, uh, or the Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster that we were uh, looking at. Uh, in our case, it was OpenShift, you know, and, and uh, this is, this is available for you to try today. It's in a private preview, but, uh, you know, just send us an email and then you know we will uh, uh, we will make sure that you're getting it. Uh, um, this is called Red Hat Developer Hub. And as we move forward, um, you know we just uh, you know showed you how we have removed friction on the onboarding side. The second one is improving flow state. You know, and what is flow state? Um, flow state is essentially you, you know helping developers be in the moment, be in the zone. You've all heard developers say, oh, I'm in the zone, I'm in the moment, I'm, I'm being more productive. What they essentially mean is they finally have a chance to concentrate and code without any distractions, without any interruptions. Um, later, uh, later today in the second session uh, or in the third session of the day, you will see uh, my colleague talk about how developers have less than 55 minutes of productive coding time a day and and it is less than four hours every week is how how product how uh, productive time is available for developers. The rest of the time they spend in you know setting up uh, setting up the uh, environment, uh, you know, um, getting caught in the processes, so on and so forth. And again, to explain flow state, I want to go back to the analogy of entertainment. You know, we all we all take um, uh, binge watching 
uh, for granted the way Netflix changed uh, user behavior or viewer behavior, I should say, um, uh, for granted. But what Netflix did is amazing. Uh, you know, they 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 said, "Hey, we are going to start producing shows, and uh, this, but but these shows uh, will be catered." towards the user, not towards the advertiser, not towards TV networks, but towards the viewer, you know, and how can we give these viewers an optimal viewing experience, right? So, so they said, when we produce a season, we are going to release all the shows because let the viewer decide whether they want to watch all the seasons in one one day, one night, or one week, or, you know, they want to spread it out and watch it over three months, right? Um, and, and that in and itself was a massive change in viewer loyalty and viewer uh, behavior change uh, that Netflix did. But they didn't stop there. They said, where else are users or viewers getting frustrated? You know, why should we see the, uh, you know, credits when the show is done? Maybe you don't want to watch the credits. So they said, if you're interested, there is a button. But by default, when the episode ends, in five seconds, it takes you to the next episode. But they went one step further again, right, in removing that user friction because they were deliberately thinking about good design and viewership experience. They said, oh, you don't want to watch even the intro when the next episode starts? Skip intro. You know, they gave you that option. You can skip the intro and go where you left off um, in the previous episode. I think that's fascinating uh, in how um, Netflix, uh, you know, achieved uh, um, that that momentous uh, 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 sort of behavior leap uh, from uh, uh, from traditional uh, uh, cable network uh, shows. Um, and and it's in in a very similar way, you know, from the for inner loop, we want to get developers into that flow state. And your inner loop is where developers are actually building applications, coding their applications, testing their applications, using their favorite IDE. How can we keep them completely in the loop, in the flow, you know? And for that, uh, we I'm going to use the example of another product. In this case, it's a complete upstream product called as Podman Desktop um, to help uh, container development and application lifecycle management be more integrated and more uh, completely in, in tune and help developers be in the loop. How many of you have used Podman or are using Podman here? Okay, a few hands. So uh, well, hopefully this next one will, uh, this next demo that Natalia will do will convince you uh, to give it a spin and give it a shot. Again, it's free of cost and you can you can get started. Natalia, on to sure. you. Sure, pleasure to keep doing our live demos and now we're getting into the uh, another moment of our developer life cycle where, you know, we, we scaffolded all our projects. This is cool. We have all already. What about we need to do some change and we don't want to use the, you know, in browser IDE, we just, you know, what, what we do, we just uh, go to our repository and we just clone our already uh, created repository locally. Um, so we just copy here and we clone it. I already did it for, to, for saving time. And essentially what we do, we open our favorite IDE. I'm using Visual Studio Code, well, it can be whatever. We, we do our action, like, you know, I, I mean, we need to uh, change the code uh, and do some um, setting like packaging the application. I'm, um, this project is using a, an open source fr Java framework called Quarkus, which is optimized for container development and Kubernetes uh, uh, deployments. Uh, it's really optimized also for resource consumption and also uh, um, for, for, um, for speeding up application startup. Uh, and uh, the, the game, as you can see, is Java code, and uh, it's used also some uh, com connection to Kafka and uh, some cache with Infinispan. But let's say now, uh, the local development is fine. Let's let's think I need to containerize this app because I need to ship the container somewhere. I need to give the container to a, a colleague, whatever. So the first thing I do, you know, I, I write a Docker file or somebody else write a Docker file for me. Um, this is a really simple Docker file. Start from a base image. This is using Universal Base Image 9 and OpenJDK 17. Then I copy my artifact that I just created and, and I create my container image. So how do I get start at ease to application container development. Well, Podman Desktop is the right tool for doing that. And Podman Desktop is an open source software, which is based on the Podman engine, which is an open source uh, container engine, which is uh, uh, focusing on security uh, for running rootless container, demoless is demonless approach. So it's really focused on security and, uh, and, uh, and speed. 
When you download Podman Desktop for Mac, Windows, Linux, I'm using it in my Fedora workstation. You can also connect it to a rich set of uh, extension or, or plugins. I'm, uh, you can either deploy to your local Kubernetes cluster with OpenShift Local or Kind, or to a remote cluster. I'm using the OpenShift uh, Developer Sandbox. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. So, and the other cool thing of Podman Dex, it can nicely connect to uh, your favorite registry. I already connected to Red Hat Way, which is a public container registry, but you can uh, connect to Docker Hub or GitHub or any of your favorite registries. So let's start containerize our app. You have a, um, a list of available container image, but you can also build your own. And uh, it's really easy. From your clone repository, you, you just target the, the Docker file that we've seen before. And uh, uh, simple as that, you, you define how is the container image. I'm going to tag it for, with the name I'm going to use to push to, to my registry. So this is going to be Kinoa, Wind Turbine, latest tag. And uh, simple as that, I'm going to just uh, you know, build the container. This takes some while, it depends on how much the container is, uh, is, is made. But once you build it, uh, straight, really easy, you can uh, go to the list of uh, images that you create and uh, you can start this container. Uh, you can either inject some settings like environment variable, networking and security. By default, this is a secure tool, open source tool, but you can also mm, toggle some of those security settings. Uh, those are settings that you can inject uh, as you want. Let's say you want to use default port, default environment variable. It's really easy to start the container. It's going to be available in the list of the container and where you can see, of course, logs. Um, it looks like it's super small. You're becoming blind, but don't worry. Just, uh, just to go into the flow and uh, you can uh, access the, the terminal. And finally, you can access the container local. So I'm using the container locally. It's the same game we deployed with, the, we deployed with developer hub on some cluster. Now it's running locally. Uh, and I think it's ready to be deployed somewhere. If you need any development environment, there's this convenient uh, environment called developer sandbox. So my colleague Marcos is going to show you it in the, um, in the in the while uh, in, after in, in the session how it works but essentially is a free environment where you get an access to this uh, uh, OpenShift cluster uh, and this is again the OpenShift web console that you can have uh, start and uh, you can have to start deploying your application. Um, how you deploy application with a frictionless approach? Well, if you don't have, a, you don't want to spend time on learning too much Kubernetes, or you want a, an easy way to do that, from Podman Desktop, you can just deploy your uh, app by clicking in this uh, this little rocket icon. This is gonna. Uh, auto-generate some YAML file describing your application, and then it's going to deploy into the target cluster. So as you can see here, this is just deploying the container image that we were, that we were building. And uh, um, if your container image is pushed to a remote registry, I already did it before to save time, but you can either do from uh, from Podman Deck. So if it's already pushed to a remote registry, then your container image, uh, your uh, pod is deployed into this remote Kubernetes cluster. So another way to deploy the same app, but from the inner loop as a developer at ease. Back to you, Mito. Um, thank you, Natale. And and you guys will be able to play this uh, game in just a bit. But but what you saw here is essentially Podman Desktop uh, is is that really optimized tool to help developers be in the flow state, right? Uh, where we are, uh, uh, where it helps developers uh, maximize and maximize the. Uh, container development application lifecycle management in a more seamless way. Um, and that, that brings me to the last uh, uh, part of uh, today's talk, which is uh, establishing a strong feedback loop. Going to the same parlance of um, entertainment and uh, television shows, you know, feedback loop essentially means production. Right, like um, how is Netflix able to produce so many hit shows that are popular around the world, while most cable networks, you know, in their lifetimes have produced two, maybe three, if they are lucky, uh, good uh, good shows. Um, that's because Netflix is able to, you know, sort of test how um, how the show is uh, resonating across the world. They're able to get data. They're able to, uh, you know, figure it out and then, you know, uh, try to replicate it. The Casa, La Casa de 
pa papel, uh, yeah. papel, okay. like I said, uh, the papel. Um, that's the one that's really famous in Europe, and now they're trying to do that in the US and other uh, parts of the world. Uh, Squid Game, you know, it, it was super popular in Korea, but they replicated that for the rest of the world. But they're able to get that viewer data, that viewer analytics, how many eyeballs are seeing, where are they stopping, where are they, uh, you know, Xing out, so on and so forth. Bring the data into the uh, application and then take it from there, you know. That, uh, now, now, how can we bring that sort of uh, uh, feedback uh, uh, in feedback loop into uh, into the software development life cycle. Essentially, you know, this is where your outer loop comes into picture, right? Once your application is developed and it's, it's getting ready to be published, you know, how do you, can you secure it? Um, can you uh, make sure it's compliant and, you know, uh, you're build it, making it compliant, making it secure, and now you're ready to publish it. That entire software delivery time, you know, um, how can you shorten that as much as possible and increase the deployment time so that, you know, People, uh, enterprises can, you're supporting enterprises to have that iterative development. Um, that is where, um, you know, we are helping uh, companies with the with the feedback loop. And for this, we have a product uh, called as Red Hat Trusted Software Supply Chain that we just announced in our user summit uh, uh, earlier uh, this year in May. Um, and again, this is in private preview, but, you know, um, this allows you to uh, help build applications, deploy applications more securely um, in, a, in a more uh, seamless way. Uh, Natale, quick demo or we go into uh, the game itself? Well, we are getting into the end. So yeah. um, I just want to show you that uh, for we're finally playing this, this game together. So thank you for staying with us until the end. Uh, I just want to show me too that, again, uh, security should be in pu put in place from the beginning. Right? So we want to deploy this app in a secure way. And this product you just mentioned help, help us to doing that. So we are ready done to save time so you can, you know, we can start the, the game. But essentially, when you use Red Hat Trusted Application Pipeline, uh, you, can start, we, you can start from the, some repository like uh, the one we just created. And this will create a secure pipeline, similarly to what we've seen before, but this is more focused on security. Uh, and uh, it has many gates, like uh, not only it build the containers, but also inspect the image. It performs some uh, scan with uh, uh, clay, so it's able to scan your container image and uh, th then run and give you some, uh, um, some score, some vulnerability list. Then it uh, performs a scan with an antivirus, analyze the software uh, bill of material. So it's a complete set and checks before you deploy the app. It can connect to your existing cluster. I connected to the cluster and now Mitun is, is play, it's time to play the game deployed in secure way with this uh, system. Uh, I want to show you that the, the tap deployed the app uh, here. Uh, with, uh, here I put also all, all the dependencies, but now it's, play, it's time to play the app. So I'm, I kindly ask you to use your phone to uh, finally consume the app we scaffolded at the beginning with Developer Hub that we built with Podman Desktop, that we deployed securely with the Trusted Application Pipeline, you should see now a rotating car. This means that you are waiting for the game to start. The, the system uh, assigns you automatically in two teams. So who is team one? Who is team two? Great. So let's see what is happening. Uh, you have seen the front end of the game. and I'm, I'm going to open the the back end of the game. So this is our game we just deployed, and uh, you know we will we'll, essentially we can open also from uh, from from the cluster itself. So you see that that one, and I'm gonna uh, uh, access the dashboard to start the game. I see some of you in team one and team two. It looks like we have a 37 in team one, 37 in team two. So equally distributed. When I'm hitting the play button, what happens? You're going to see a windmill in your phone, and you have to generate green energy by tapping your phone to move the car. I want to say that if you don't play, you are affecting the score of the whole team. And for those of you that wins, we have some cool gadget to give away. So please don't miss this opportunity to run this uh, great game. Three, two, one. You should see a windmill and please start tapping. Tap, 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 tap as fast as you can. Come on, team one. We can do better. We can do definitely better. Don't Ooh. destroy your phone, by the way, because it's always. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a close race. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. 
Team 1, Team 1 is getting some gain. Oh! Woo! Congratulations to Team 1. Congratulations. <laughs> so, again, that, that was great. We have a leaderboard, uh, and we have also the Team 1 that won. Uh, we're going to... I have the 45, only 45, but who is in the first uh, three of this rank? Who is uh, Badinet? Great, you win some cool swag. Come to that booth and we, with the, your phone and we'll give you the swag. Uh, who is Barbero? Barbero, congratulations. Come to the booth and we'll give you the swag. Who is uh, Vietzke? Oh, I mean, no, you know. Who is Hickling? Hickling, congratulations. You won the swag. Come to the booth and we'll give uh, uh, this one. So thank you all for playing this cool game with us. It was just an example to show how the developer experience can also bring joy to the users in the complete uh, feedback. Yeah. So in, in recap, you know, uh, I want to say that, you know, an ideal developer experience is one which reduces developer toil, whether it is in the onboarding process, whether it is in the inner loop or in the outer loop and increases developer joy. You know, it's, it, it comes down to uh, those two things uh, at the end of the day. Um, and, uh, and, and again, we think about developer experience at Red Hat beyond just product. We also have a lot of, uh, uh, we ha also have a great program with a lot of content and a lot of events that we go. And um, uh, definitely, uh, you know, this is one of those events, but we do over 140 events across the world. And a lot of contents, a lot of eBooks, et cetera, that we, we have, which will help developers be up to date. Um, so if you are not already part of the developer program, sign up. There's also the QR codes behind the chairs. You can scan those and sign up and you'll be uh, in the loop uh, and informed about all the latest and greatest things that we are doing as a uh, company and as a team. Um, and uh, additionally, we also have uh, uh, a lot of uh, good eBooks that we give out. Uh, and tomorrow uh, we have the authors here uh, to sign those books, so be there. All the products that we showed today are available for you to try, um, whether it is the developer hub or the pod or Podman desktop or Red Hat uh, Trusted Software Supply Chain. Um, for those products which are in private preview, send us a mail and we'll definitely um, get you in. Um, but that's it. Um, thank you. Stick around for the rest of the day for more in-depth sessions on the products that we showed. Thanks again. Thank you. Stay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are going to make the change in the microphone. In the meantime, there are a couple of questions coming from the audience. By the way, you can submit your questions if you want. Uh, there is the app and you can submit your questions in real time. So, so the first question is, maybe, yeah. The, the first question is, does the platform support GitLab? So if you mean developer hub, yes, it support GitLab, and you can use GitLab, but likewise we did for GitHub in this case. So uh, our plan is to support major uh, Git uh, systems like GitLab, Bitbucket, and, uh, and GitHub. And everyone else. Yeah, and everyone else. The other question is, does it support creating services inside a monorepo? A monorepo, which, which service? What do you mean? Who, who made the question? Whoever had that question, whether they, you know, can you create more services and run the services from within um, uh, Developer Hub? Yes, in short, you can. But you know, uh, let's let's meet on the side, and then we could uh, go in depth and uh, you know uh, clarify your question, and then we can answer that. Thank you. Uh, right now, Hans uh, Peter here will talk more in depth about Developer Hub. So, yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you so much.